Hello and welcome to the Leelanau County Board of Commissioners District 4 Candidate Forum hosted by the League of Women Voters of Leelanau County in partnership with the Leelanau Enterprise and Traverse Area Community Media. This session will also include an information on local items appearing on the Leelanau Township ballot and a proposed millage to fund beta services in our region. My name is Tricia Denton, and I am the president of the League of Women Voters of Leelanau County. Empowering voters, defending democracy, we strive for a democracy where every person has the right, the desire, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. The League of Women Voters is a national nonpartisan political organization that for more than 100 years has encouraged the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League as an organization never endorses or opposes candidates or parties. We do make an effort to obtain factual information on ballot issues and candidates' views and share this information as widely as possible. To begin the program, I will cover the ballot proposals in an educational format. I will pre present the ballot language for four items that appearing on the Leelana Township ballot. The four Leelana Township proposals on the November 8 ballot are a millage renewal for facilities, roads, and equipment, a millage renewal of police services, a millage, uh, new millage for an independent library proposal, and a, an amendment to the Leelana Township zoning ordinance. The first millage renewal for facilities, roads, and equipment uh, is a renewal and states shall the expired previously voted increase in the tax limitation of 0 0.3000 mills or 30 cents per, per 1,000 of taxable value reduced to 0.9. 0.2948 mills or 0.2948 per 1,000 of taxable value by the required millage rollbacks be renewed at an increased up to the original voted 0 0.300 mills and levied for four years through 2022 through 2025 inclusive for the continuation of facility improvements, road improvements, and equipment. Voters will be asked to vote yes or no on this renewal. The second is a renewal of millage for police services. Shall the expired previously voted increase in the tax limitation of point 2500 mills reduced to 0.2457 mills by the required millage rollbacks be renewed at an increase up to the original voted 0 0.2500 mills and levied for four years, 2022 through 2025 inclusive for the continuation of police services. The revenue may be dispersed to Leelanau County for the provision of contracted for police services and related equipment. Voters will be asked to vote yes or no. The third proposal is a Leelanau Township um, millage to adopt a millage for the an independent library. And it states, shall the tax limitation on all property within Leelanau Township, Leelanau County, Michigan be increased 
and the township be authorized to levy annually a new additional millage in an amount not to exceed 0.5 mil for six years, 2022 to 2027 inclusive, for the purpose of establishing, operating, and equipping a township library in Leelana Township and for all other library purposes authorized by law. Voters will be asked to vote yes or no. And finally, the last local uh, ballot measure on the Leelana Township ballot is an amendment to the zoning ordinance. For this ballot measure, the township website is your best uh, reference for uh, all the details, but I'll just read uh, on March 28th, 2022, the Leelana Township Board of Trustees adopted ordinance number one of 2022, amending the Leelana Township zoning ordinance by amending article two definitions, article three land use districts, Article 7, Commercial Districts, and Article 15, Environmental Standards. Shall this ordinance, number one of 2022, amending the Leelana Township Zoning Ordinance be approved? Yes or no. For this ballot initiative, the League of Women Voters is able to present further information drawing on official sources and local sources who are both in favor and opposed to this measure. This referendum ballot is in response to a petition. Normally, zoning ordinance amendments following official planning commission processes become effective after township board approval. Township planning commissions are responsible for periodically reviewing and recommending amendments to township zoning ordinance. In March of 2021, the Leelana Township Planning Commission was asked to review the zoning ordinance. In particular, their articles related to commercial resort districts. From April 2021 to February 2022, the Planning Commission researched other ordinances and standards, met tw more than 20 times in open meetings and held two public hearings. In March of 2022, the Leelona County Planning Commission reviewed, received public comment and voted unanimously to recommend approval of the proposed ordinance amendments to the Township Board. And March 28, 2022, the Leelana Township Board voted unanimously to adopt the ordinance amendment. A yes vote on this ballot proposal would mean that you find the changes that were made to update the zoning ordinance appropriate. A majority yes vote means that the amended zoning ordinance will take effect. Uh, uh, as I said, the league is offer to is uh, able to offer both uh, for and against um, statements. These are some of the statements that we found for um, uh, posted by friends of the Third Coast. Um, they say a yes vote will adopt an important zoning law that protects our coastline, wetlands, and watershed and will reduce overcrowding, smoke, noise, and traffic, Some more, support the environmental protection provisions, including shoreline and wetland setbacks in response to a climate resiliency study, high water levels, stormwater impacts, and recommendations and supports setbacks to mitigate community impact, such as a revised density formula and unit setbacks from property lines. A no vote means that you find the changes to the zoning ordinance inappropriate. 
a majority no vote means that the original zoning ordinance amendment will not take effect. Among points stated by Build and Invest in Leelanau Township, the community formed in April 2022 to circulate the petition for this ballot initiative. They uh, say that there is no need for additional set addition of setbacks from wetlands and that the setbacks and revised density calculation formula mean that a business will not be able to expand. So that's it for the Leelanau Township uh, ballot overview. And next up, we have with us today, Eric Langar, Communications and Development Director for, excuse me, Director for Bay Area Transportation Authority, BETA, to share some factual educational information on the BETA Services Millage Renewal request to appear on Lila and Grand Traverse County ballots. Eric? Thank you, Tricia, and, and thank you for this opportunity. I'll, I'll keep my, my uh, remarks brief because uh, you're here to see uh, Mr. Wessel and Mr. McMillan and uh, just get a, a brief update of what's going on in the, in the public transit world. I may have seen some of you uh, at Leland on Caged uh, on Saturday, although the, the weather hampered, uh, you know, at a little bit, but spirits were high and Beta provided transportation um, all the way from Traverse City up to Northport and back all day long on Saturday for any folks that wanted to attend Leland on Cage. So hopefully people got out and enjoyed some good food and, and music and things like that. So real quickly, uh, what's going on in the world of, of public transit in, in, in our region? Um, so one of the things specifically is uh, that beta will be on the, the ballot on November 8th. Uh, but before I get into that real quick, uh, beta has continued to provide uh, public transit service. Um, we cover our 900 square mile uh, area. We provide over a thousand rides a day. Since 2017, we've given over 2 million rides. And of course, a lot of our transportation is for those who, who rely on, on public transit as an essential service. So over 170,000 rides a year are provided to seniors and folks with disabilities. The other thing Beta's been doing is we've been um, diversifying our fleet, uh, trying to invest in clean energy um, and uh, better fuel efficient vehicles. Uh, we've also been kind of right-sizing our fleet. So matching the vehicle type to the transportation. So not as many large vehicles rolling around, more of kind of investing in more of our like smaller cutaways and vans. And we've made an investment in propane fueling uh, as well, which is less CO2 emissions, um, leaner and, and greener for, for, the, for the environment um, and is, is a lot quieter vehicle as well. So we're continuing to focus over 40% of our fleet now is uh, powered by propane. And we're also looking at adding electric vehicles into our fleet as well as those become uh, available um, uh, to the, the public transit agencies. So what, what's happening on November 8th? Um, on November 8th, there will be a ballot request. This is a renewal um, at a lower rate. So um, previously in 2017, uh, voters approved a 0.5 mil. Um, this has since kind of been rolled back. And so we're, we're asking for a renewal um, at a lower rate of 0.4788. Um, it's a five-year millage. Um, and what will this supply? This will be basically the continued operation of beta. So the continued uh, service providing and, and things like that. Uh, things like bus purchases and um, you know, shelter improvements and things like that. Those come out of grants and other funding. This is just is for the sole operation of, of beta. So what has beta done over the last couple of years uh, since the last time our millage was approved? Um, we've been adding uh, new services, adding new technology. Like I said, expanding our fleet to be more fuel efficient. Um, we've uh, been continued to see ridership increases, although the pandemic and some staffing challenges as many entities are having did kind of pull us back a little bit, but ridership is continuing to, to, to see increases. And we're planning for the future for what the next five to 10 years look like uh, for, for beta because 
Leelanau County and Grand Traverse County are going to continue to grow, continue to need services like public transit to help kind of alleviate some of those strains in our roadways and offer people an alternative for, for multimodal transportation. So again, um, you know, the, the millage is to continue to provide safe and efficient transportation for the community, continue to provide essential services and help move people to, to work, health care, um, shopping, educational opportunities, and, and connect those things across the board. And that's all I really had to, to share, just high level, real quick, um, and we'll be on the ballot on, on November 8th. Thank you so much, Eric. And just a reminder, if uh, any of you need more information about any of these items, the Leelanau Township website um, has information on those ballot proposals. And I'm sure that the beta website has more information on the beta millage. And again, the league presents this information for educational purposes only and does not endorse or oppose any of the ballot items discussed today. Now to the part you've all been waiting for, uh, our candidate portion of the forum. We're so grateful to the candidates for participating in the process of informing voters through this forum. And a special thank you to our moderator, the Honorable Judge Robert A. Cooney, who is SB called Bob for this evening. He's just a voter like the rest of us tonight. Uh, Bob, thank you for volunteering your time to assist tonight and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Tricia, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for inviting me to assist with, this, with tonight's program. Uh, again, my name is Bob Cooney. I'm a judge in the 86th District Court for Grand Chavers, Antrim, and Leelanau counties. And I welcome uh, our candidates and you, the voters, to this important community forum. The purpose of this election forum is to provide an opportunity for you to meet learn about the qualifications and hear the views of the candidates running for the position of Leelanau County Commissioner, District 4. The candidates for District 4 are Mr. Mike McMillan, if you could please wave to the voters, Mr. McMillan, thank you, and Ty Wessel, if you could also wave to the voters, thank you. First, a brief overview of the format and guidelines for tonight's forum. Questions for the forum have been submitted via email prior to this forum and screened by me for propriety, clarity, relevance, and duplication. To begin, each candidate will give a two minute prepared opening statement. Then they will each have one minute to respond to a question previously submitted to them. We will rotate who will speak first. And uh, Mr. McMillan won the coin toss, so he'll start off with his uh, introduction. The candidates will then respond to the questions that were submitted by email by voters. And each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. There will be no follow-up responses, but each candidate will be given two minutes for closing remarks once I've completed the time for questions. Timing for answers begins when the candidate begins to speak and uh, the meeting host will also notify when 10 seconds are remaining by first raising her hand in the screen as she's demonstrating right now and then closing her hand when the time has elapsed. And at that point, I'll try to uh, guide the candidate to the end of a sentence. Uh, Again, each candidate will have two minutes to give their opening statements. And uh, again, Mr. McMillan uh, won the coin toss. So we will uh, begin with uh, his two minute introduction. So go ahead, Mr. McMillan. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mike McMillan. I'd like to thank Tricia from the League of Women Voters, Judge Bob and Ty, our moderator and Ty Russell for his participation tonight. Uh, my first experience coming to the, uh, the county began in 1983 when I was hired as Sugarloaf, and I was fortunate to meet my wife the following year. We've been married for 36 years. We have four children, two grandchildren, and one on the way. 
Uh, my professional experiences include 32 years at PepsiCo in a number of executive positions and 10 years at a publicly traded company based in Memphis, Tennessee, where I served as the uh, chairman of the governance committee. Um, we moved here in 2019 and continued our community involvement, uh, including being election inspectors in the 2020 primary and the 2020 uh, general election. Also was very fortunate to work and lead a group of neighbors in uh, bringing the very first and only fiber optic to, uh, to Leelanau County. We are now serving, servicing over 200 homes and businesses with fiber optic in the area. That experience led me to an invitation to uh, Lyft, which is the Leelanau Internet Committee. And from there, that's actually based on that experience is the reason why I'm running for office. And it was a disappointing experience from the standpoint of our final conclusion. And although the goal was, was good, the way we got there is not good for, for the county. And the reason I say that is that in this past summer, uh, Ty was the signature on a contract, a $5 million contract with a company based out of Alabama that is a private, backed by private equity. Uh, and it was a no bid contract. And I don't know anybody on this call, anybody witnessing this call does anything without a second bid. We did have no bids on that $5 million. That second concerning point of that contract is that of that $5 million, we only have $3.2 million, which means the remaining $1.8 million will be coming from the general fund. So I hope you support my election, which I like to do is, is move forward with a better proposal for the county. Thank you, Mr. McMillan and Mr. Wessel. Uh, your opening statement, please. Thank you. And I'd like to express my thanks to Judge Cooney, Ms. De Ms. Denton, the League of Women Voters, Travers Area Media, and Mike McMillan for being here. Thank you. I've appreciated the opportunity to serve as District 4 County Commissioner for four terms. As board chair and commissioner, I've tried to model civility, consensus building, respect, commitment to constituent service, and financial stewardship. I believe that how we do our business together is sometimes as important as the final decisions that we make. I have worked hard to represent all residents, ensure delivery of quality services to all residents, fund and support all state mandated services, and work with our community partners. Most importantly, I have attempted to provide thoughtful leadership. I believe it is my job to listen more than to talk, seek to understand, and find appropriate compromise and consensus. I have as commissioner successfully led and advocated for maintaining sound finances, reducing our debt, paying down the retirement liability and keeping taxes low. I've involved the county in several critical efforts to address our county's housing crisis and meet the needs of young families. For my work in that uh, field, I received the uh, Housing uh, Award, uh, the Regional Housing Cornerstone Leadership Award for housing a couple of years ago. I've established collaborative partnerships to bring high-speed fiber to the residents in the county. I've moved forward after 30 years with a septic ordinance with my colleagues to protect our lakes and groundwater. And uh, I've worked hard to collaborate with the serve on the Northern Lakes Community Mental Health Board, the Benzie Leland Health Department Board, the Lyft Broadband Expansion Group and the Housing Action Committee. I'm running for a re-election because I enjoy the work and I believe that I have made a difference. I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Wessel. And we'll uh, begin alternating candidates after that. So uh, Ms. Denton, just to be sure, I'm supposed to start with Mr. Wessel for the first question. Okay. so. Uh, and uh, the first question, uh, Mr. Wessel, and remember you have one minute to respond uh, to this and all subsequent questions. What are your top three priorities for Leelanau County? Thank you. That is a, uh, it's a tough question to, to identify your top three, uh, but I think the, uh, my first priority is excellence in delivering all those services mandated by the state that county government ought to provide. That's law enforcement, that's elections, that's treasurer's office, clerk, the courts, prosecutor's office, register of deeds. We just need to make sure that we have excellence. And that's my top priority, number one. Number two, uh, responsible fiscal management and low taxes. Number three, 
collaboration and partnerships to support residents, young families, children, business owners, and seniors as we move forward. As commissioner, I will seek opportunities to work with regional and community partners in a proactive and civil manner to meet those three priorities. Thank you. All right, Mr. McMillan, your top three priorities for Lillinaw County. Thank you, Judge, Judge Bob, for the opportunity. Uh, my top three priorities would be one to uh, redefine our strategic plan. I think that's what we're lacking in the county is something that's something that's you can communicate to most every every one of our citizens. The current general plan is 182 pages. It takes a long time to get through it. Our proposal would be to put together a 10-year strategic plan that is no longer than 20, 20 pages. I have the experience from my strategic planning at PepsiCo. I could bring a lot of value to that experience. The uh, the second thing that would would um, usher in is fiber for the entire uh, county by two, the year 2027. That's going to take a, a big effort on everybody's part. It's going to take a, a an investment of both the citizens, the county, and and uh, private industry. And the third thing that I would uh, that I am uh, looking to do is the end the current practice of no bid contracts currently being exercised by the county. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, we will now begin with questions submitted by an email from constituents. So one of the most uh, common questions that was asked, and uh, I have consolidated some of the questions uh, in order to try to cover as many topics as the public was interested in, but one of the most popular questions was, uh, the, B the Board of Commissioners has received much public written comment from residents citing concerns about election integrity. A petition was submitted to the Board of Commissioners to address these concerns and discontinue the use of voting machines until verification of paper ballots and computer scan facsimiles has been completed. What is your position on this issue? And we'll begin with Mr. McMillan this time. Obviously a very controversial question, just not in the county, but across the country. Uh, I can tell you from my experience, I was an election inspector in Memphis for the 2016 election. And I carried on that experience as an election inspector here in, uh, in uh, Leland Township. Uh, I think Michelle Crocker does a, a fine job as our county clerk. Uh, the training that I received both in Memphis and here made me feel very comfortable. I would encourage everyone to be an election inspector or be involved with, engage with the process. I have a tremendous amount of trust in the process. I, I really do. I'd say that sincerely, and I know a lot of folks that, that don't necessarily trust it today, but I believe the process works. Now, of course, there are things that we could do better. Are there examples? Of course, there are examples of things that went off the rails for us. But in general, from my own personal experience, I would encourage everybody to engage the process instead of just simply criticizing the process. Thank you. Mr. Wessel, your response? Yes, thank you, Judge. I, uh, I have uh, been sitting at the uh, Board of Commissioners table in the last several months when uh, this has been a hot topic. We have had public comment after public comment on uh, election integrity. Uh, we, uh, we have listened carefully. Uh, we have uh, studied the issue. Uh, I, I have been concerned about uh, the number of really debunked myths that continue to be talked about. And uh, uh, corridor, co court finding after court finding is, uh, as, as debunked those myths. And I, I, I just wish that we'd sit back and, and uh, of course we all want election integrity, uh, but uh, we don't wanna throw out our voting machines. Uh, we, we don't wanna believe that uh, some of the things that people are telling us are true are true just because they heard it or saw it on the internet. And uh, I did listen to the presentation by Michelle Crocker, our clerk, and I am absolutely convinced that our election system is, uh, is as good as it can get, and it is fair, and it is honest, and uh, I respect our clerks and our Secretary of State. Thank you. All right, thank you. Our second question from uh, constituents is, a large part of leadership and governance is relationship building. 
How would you characterize the level of civility, collaboration, respect, and nonpartisan cooperation among Board of Commission members? And do you believe there is a need for improvement? And if so, what would you suggest to help improve those relationships? Uh, we'll begin with Mr. Wessel this time. Yes, thank you. Well, you know, if you, uh, if you read the enterprise, you uh, sometimes might believe that uh, commissioners argue all the time, but uh, we really do work pretty well together. And uh, most of our decisions, not all of them, but most of our decisions are well thought out and well discussed and very civil. I wrote a Lila Enterprise uh, forum piece uh, not too long ago about Jean Watowski and what a good listener she was, she was when she was commissioner. And in that article, I said, too often we spend all of our time and fail to understanding the views of others. We spend all of our time defending our own views. We must listen for understanding. Polarization reflects poorly upon the quality of our decision making. And I, 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 I believe in civility. I believe in consensus building and, and, and I be believe in relationships. And, and you accomplish that by wanting to have those relationships and being respectful. All right, thank you. And Mr. McMillan, your response? Yeah, to build on what Ty was saying, if you read the Leland Long uh, Enterprise, it sometimes reads like the Leland Long Inquirer. Uh, I don't believe there's as much angst as reported amongst the commissioners. I uh, know four of the commissioners fairly well. They seem to be very fine people. I've met Ty on a number of occasions and fine gentleman he is as well. Uh, I have found during my experience at PepsiCo and working with competing priorities, not Democrat, Republican, which you know is a whole other subject on why we're Republicans and Democrats and county commissioners. But uh, I have also found when you bring in a new group and new people that, that are uh, operating under a lot of conflict, that uh, going off site for a couple of days and maybe even a SWOT analysis uh, to bring the parties together so that you can find like-mindedness you can find commonality. And so I would, I would strongly suggest maybe an off-campus start for every administration. All right, thank you. The next question, and uh, you'll be up first this time, Mr. McMillan, what is your understanding of the state mandated responsibilities of county government? And where do you stand on offering county services above those services that are mandated by the Constitution? That's a great question. Uh, I've not had a lot of time to study it. Uh, we are required to do certain things, right? I mean, most recently the state changed the laws on juveniles, recognizing now juveniles to be 17. Uh, and, and instead of uh, they were adults at 17, that puts added pressure on our sheriff's department and 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 whatnot. Uh, my understanding is that you know we're mandated, obviously by law, to follow those those uh, mandates from the state. And as far as the what we can do over and beyond that, it's a, it's just a matter of what the needs are for the community. So to, to to specify where I stand in a certain position, I'd have to hear the positions from the community, the different stakeholders and then make determinations that are consistent with the state, the state mandates. All right, thank you. And Mr. Wessel. Yes, well, I, and uh, I kind of touched upon uh, the mandated responsibilities in my top priority. Uh, we have mandated responsibilities in the clerk's office and the treasurer's office and the registrar's office and uh, the courts and the jail and, and the sheriff's office. Um, but then there are things we can go beyond that. And we've been fairly cautious as a county about not going beyond the mandated uh, 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 services unless uh, the, the people speak for it. So we had an early childhood millage. It was argued that that wasn't a mandated responsibility. We shouldn't do it. But we, uh, we took it to the vote of the people and the people wanted it. And my view is we must ensure excellence on the mandated responsibilities and then work with our community and tr see if we can find a way within our resources to meet the non-mandated request of the community. But we certainly have to do the mandated uh, road service, road, road patrol is not mandated, but of course we want it to be there. Thank you. All right, our next question is, 
uh, affordable housing continues to be a problem in our region and in Leelanau County. What do you believe is the county's role in addressing this issue? And how would this belief impact your actions as a commissioner? We'll begin with Mr. Wessel this time. Thank you, thank you. Well, I, uh, I mentioned that a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I received the uh, Community Quarterstone Award for Housing Leadership. And when I first was a county commissioner, we brought together a uh, housing uh, committee and uh, there wasn't much support for that. We filled the room with people saying that was not a responsibility of county government. Since that time, I think most commissioners would say we do have a role. We have an advocacy role, we have a land bank role, we have a brownfield role, uh, we have a role to work with our community partners, uh, we, we need to work with tax incremental financing, we need to talk to people about pilots, but most importantly, we need to get our community ready. And as a housing action committee, we developed a housing readiness inventory that they're using now all over Northwest Michigan to uh, help communities get ready because uh, the developers told us the biggest hurdle to building is government. Thank you. All right, and uh, Mr. Uh, McMillan. Yeah, my understanding is that uh, Ty ran on this uh, eight years ago on an, uh, affordable housing. And I think the only thing that has changed and we've witnessed the change is we're now using the uh, phrase attainable housing eight years later. Uh, I would take a different approach. Um, my experience since living here and working with our lo local township supervisor is I, I firmly believe the power, uh, the constituted power in this county rests with the townships. So I would work with the townships and have the townships identify where the needs are. And particularly when you look at townships like Sutton's Bay and, and Leland Hill Township is that you need to have the infrastructure. You probably you would need to have sewer. You would have to have the internet. You'd have to have natural gas. You, you couldn't afford to be building large complexes and, and addressing the needs of the community unless you had those basic fundamentals. But I would start and start with the townships and find out what the needs are and have us bring those resources where we can back to the townships. All right, thank you. Next question, and we'll start with Mr. Wessel this time. For the past year, there has been much discussion and criticism about the creation of two new county departments, finance and human resources. Republican commissioners all supported and Democratic commissioners all voted against. Uh, what position would you have taken in or did take, and what is your understanding of the process used for reorganization, the financial impact? And I'm sorry, we're supposed to begin with Mr. McMillan next. Yeah, would, you, would you mind repeating the question? I, I, I will. Thank you. For the past year, there has been much discussion and criticism about the creation of two new county departments, finance and human resources. Republican commissioners all supported and Democratic commissioners all voted against the creation. What position would you have taken and what is your understanding of the process used for reorganization and the financial impact? Uh, good question from the standpoint of my position would be to support that. And the reason I say I would support the removal of the HR process and the uh, finance process, because I think those are critical processes as we go forward and, and within the county. The, um, and the reason, I, the reason I say that is that if one, one person holds all those accountabilities, and in our case, I think Michelle's been there 43 years, when Michelle leaves, she takes a lot of institutional knowledge away with her. And I think as we plan for the future and, and better for turnover, I think it's better that those those functions are separated. I've worked again. I said I worked 32 years for a company that is probably worldwide recognized for its HR processes and finance processes, and they work very very fine separate. And I think they bring a lot of value to the organization. And Mr. Wessel, your response? Yes. Well, I was one of those commissioners at the table that voted no. Uh, consistently on uh, on that uh, on that reorganization, 
Um, but I I'm also one of the commissioners at the table that says we've made that decision. Now we must make that decision work. And that's what we're doing. Um, the, uh, the process was what I was concerned about. Uh, it was a costly reorganization, but we started with reorganization without without getting the people involved that were getting their getting getting their jobs changed, they needed to be involved. We didn't have the clerk involved in the reorganization. So I, I thought the process was was warped a bit. Uh, I didn't like uh, the way we went about uh, the reorganization. But uh, when I became chair, I said, we are going to make this work and uh, we are working together to make it work. Uh, I think it's always good though, before you reorganize that you look at why you're doing that. We had good audits, we had no grievances. I thought it wasn't timely to reorganize at that time. All right, thank you. Next question. After almost 30 years of debate and partisan disagreement, the current board recently voted 5-2 to move forward with a septic ordinance at the time of sale or transfer of a home. What is your position on that issue and how would you handle the process for implementing such a program? What are your views on the Board of Commissioners role in protecting the environment? And we'll begin with Mr. Wessel this time. Thank you. You're right, Judge. Uh, that was a 30-hour uh, debate and uh, lots of study. Uh, it was um, some of us couldn't understand, can't understand why Michigan is the only state in the United States that doesn't have a statewide septic inspection uh, ordinance. Uh, we think we have uh, to protect the environment. Uh, it, we got caught up into cost and we got caught up into property rights. Uh, we brought in lots of experts and all of the experts, almost all of the experts said, yes, we need a septic ordinance. Uh, the, the, the two people that voted no this time weren't opposed to all of the septic, but they uh, just wanted it around the lakes. And uh, the science told us we needed it countywide. We're working with a health department. Uh, they're developing an ordinance that uh, we will then bring back to public hearing uh, yet this year. And then the Board of Commissioners will need to approve that after that public hearing. It'll also have to be approved by the Health Department. All right, and Mr. McMillan, your response? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Chairman uh, Wessel that, uh, that it was the right vote to take and uh, it's the right thing for the county. You know, for somebody personally who's, who's uh, moved so many times that we've owned and sold uh, nine different houses, I never bought a house without an inspection if it had septic or any other type of inspection. So it's hard to understand how uh, a transfer could, could occur without one. Apparently it has. I do understand and appreciate people's concerns about government regulation. We do this and we do this and we do that on the next sale. Uh, I can understand that, but when you start talking about our environment, particularly in this county, you know, we're, you know, we're surrounded by water and great lakes and just, just the beauty of it. Uh, it, it just seems like it, it's, it's something that should have happened, as Ty mentioned earlier. Uh, it's been done and it was the right, it was the right thing to do. All right, uh, next question. The county board just approved a cost of living adjustment to all county employees of $750 in a lump sum and an additional 3% wage increase to start on or has started on September 24th. Do you support this adjustment to the wages or do you believe this action was irresponsible? And we'll begin this time with Mr. McMillan. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't term it as irresponsible. I did attend the county commissioner meeting when Chet had suggested that because of the pressures of inflation and what was going on in the, in the economy, that uh, we needed a serious review of uh, the compensation. And there's no more one thing important to any employee out there than their compensation. I don't care if it's the benefits, everything else, it's what am I bringing home? And, and Chet had suggested, and the board had agreed to do an, hire a consultant to do a study. And then two months later, there's a passage of a, a bonus and a 3.5% increase without the study. And I think that's, that adds a lot of confusion. One, it's not strategic. What's your go forward vision on, on compensation, again, which is critical to, to employees. But when you 
commitments to do something and then you turn around two months later and change that, then that just adds to the confusion for the employees. But I do support, I do support the, the lump sum payment. And I also support the three and a half percent increase given the uh, current economic environment. Right, yeah, Mr. Wessel. Uh, Mr. McMillan, uh, uh, not quite right on uh, the decisions and the discussions we had at the, at the board table, uh, but we did, uh, there was one Republican commissioner and one uh, uh, Democratic commissioner that put forth a motion to acknowledge that uh, our 16, 17, 18, 19 dollars an hour staff were struggling to keep up in this economy. Our, our, our staff worked 35 hours a week uh, if a 35 hour worker gets $20 an hour, uh, they're in that Alice family network and uh, they needed assistance and we felt like we could do it. Uh, we thought that uh, the 3% increase was responsible. Our biggest asset is the people that work for us and they can't afford to live here. Uh, Leelon County has the biggest mismatch between the cost of median housing and the cost of, of, of uh, the in income. We were trying to accommodate that. We wanna keep our workers. And uh, I did see the opinion piece in the enterprise and I strongly disagree with it. I think it was very responsible. Right, next question. Please describe what you believe the roles of the county sheriff and the board of commissioners are in county governance and how you as a county commissioner could facilitate a strong and positive relationship with the sheriff's office. And we'll begin with Mr. Wessel this time. Thank you. And uh, I think we do. I think our sheriff has a uh, strong relationship with the county commission. And I think I personally have a positive relationship with him. We had a nice chat last week. We were going to have lunch last week, but uh, we both had to change it. Um, he is an elected official. He is independent from the county commission. The county commission has responsibility to provide him with the resources he needs. I think he would tell us that he gets that support from the county commission. Every once in a while, there are, are issues about expenditures, but he does have the resources uh, he needs and he has a good relationship with us and we value his services. Uh, we have supplied him with the uh, with the equipment that he needs, and he has uh, provided the services that our county needs. And Mr. McMillan, your response? Yeah, I think there may be a little bit of confusion with, with among some of the voters out there and what the responsibilities of the county commissioners are. We don't have a lot of oversight on the sheriff's department. There, as Ty mentioned, there are two separately elected positions, and they should remain that way. And I think the relationship my observation, I think it's a very healthy relationship. I think, I think the sheriff does a tremendous job. I think the dialogue from the commissioners I've talked to is very positive. And so I think there's sometimes a miscommunication as to who controls what budgets and what goes on out there. But there are two separately elected positions out there. Uh, I do think recently, though, in defense of the sheriff, he was recently criticized for attending the uh, county commissioners meeting where the uh, folks are expressing their concern about the recent election. I thought it was fairly unfounded to criticize the sheriff and, and uh, almost put a little religious slant on it as well. So uh, I think people just you know need to stay in that lane and, and let people do their jobs, but also respect that they're citizens of this country. All right, next question. What is your position on the county government role in supporting improvement of mental health services and what measures would you support or which could you not support? Mr. McMillan? Uh, as we have all witnessed in the last, since the COVID crisis, um, there's a lot of people out there are hurting and, and hurting in big ways. And, and we're talking just not seniors or people with addictions and that we're talking about kids and what they had to go through the last couple of years with uh, the COVID restrictions they, they uh, went through at schools and at home learning. Um, like in any other case, I think sometimes we need to avoid getting in issues that aren't in our level of expertise. As a county commissioner, I would look upon the mental health experts to bring us information and to, to bring us data to show us where the needs are and what, the, what, the, what their resources currently are 
And if they are talking about resources, we start having that dialogue. But again, without the data, without the insights, other than what we intuitively, intuitively have seen and read over the last couple of years, uh, it, is, it is a major concern and importance that we need to hear from the experts. And Mr. Wessel, your response? It's one of those tough ones to do in a minute. Uh, I do sit on the uh, Northern Lakes Community Mental Health Board, and I've been on that board for several years. And that's an agency that serves uh, six different counties for mental health needs. And one of our challenges are, are support for the jails. And uh, the county has a role in that. And if we're looking for solutions, I think Sheriff Borkovich would say that one of his needs is more mental health services in the jail. Certainly in Grand Traverse County, that's true. Um, early childhood millage pays for mental health services for young kids, but uh, there's a shortage of mental health uh, uh, providers. So we got to we got to work on uh, finding providers. We got to make sure that Northern Lakes Community Mental Health uh, provides the services that they need to do. And there's been some criticism in the in the in the region on Northern Lakes lately, but we're working on that to help the the, the jail. And then we got to get some mental health workers in the school, like we're currently doing through the health department and Glen Lake schools. I, I wish I had more time to talk about that. Give me some of your time, Mike. I'll, 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 I'll give you some of my time. <laughs> Very important topic. Uh, these are complex questions, there's no doubt. Uh, unfortunately, we're limited to one minute. So uh, next question, what is your position on the Leelanau County Early Childhood Village? And what do you believe is within the scope of your role as a potential commissioner regarding early childhood related services? And we'll begin with Mr. Wessel this time. Thank you, Judge. I was uh, on the Leon Early Childhood Development Commission when we worked to get this uh, issue on the, uh, on the ballot. And I was a proponent for early childhood. I think it's the single best investment we can do working with uh, young children. It was a controversial uh, issue on the Board of Commissioners. Uh, the community did support it. And uh, we just had our uh, update for the second year of the program from the health department. It's going well, it's very popular. Uh, parents are involved, the fathers are involved, the mothers are involved, uh, the schools are connected to the health department. And uh, I believe it was a, it's a county role that uh, was provided by the residents with a special millage. The only way we could do it was through the special millage, but that's one of those exceptions to mandated responsibilities if the public wants it and votes for it, let's try to make it happen with community partners. And I'm proud of the early childhood program. And Mr. McMillan, your response? Yeah, my, my understanding from talking to some of the kind of subject matter experts on the, on the topic is that there may have initially been some confusion as to what they were voting for. And maybe it was, you know, child, ch uh, child care, daycare, those type of things. But, you know, at the end of the day, as Ty has mentioned, it was voted on, it was passed, and, and we need to abide by what was, what was voted on and what was passed by the citizens. Uh, I do think it does, again, show kind of a flaw in, in some of our county processes and the fact that uh, the forecast was way off. And then so we were overfunding a program that was initially geared towards X number, and the number came in X less less that number. And so there was an attempt to, to reduce that number, which is you know within the purview of the, uh, the county commissioners, but I think it obviously could have been handled a lot better, but I do, we, we do need to respect the vote of the voters. And this I believe is up again in 2024 and that we'll have, we'll have a different opportunity then to uh, voice their opinion. All right, next we move on to senior services. What is your understanding of the role of the county senior services program? And what, if anything about this program needs to change, what would your role as a commissioner be related to this issue? And we'll begin this time with Mr. McMillan. A uh, great question. Uh, you know, given the age of our population in Leland County, I think somebody quoted saying that we were the oldest average population in the state of Michigan. Uh, it might not be quite that, but it's it's there. Uh, if you go to their website, I'm really impressed because a lot of times when you hear about an issue, you immediately say, okay, how are they communicating to the community? And if I go to their website and look, 
providing a tremendous amount of information and services to our seniors, which is a great first step. It's easy to navigate, easy to learn and see where the resources possibly could be for you. Uh, as far as you know, what the county commissioners can do, again, this is, you know, again, I may have that expression, stay in your lane. Uh, we're very limited in what we can do. We need to hear from the citizens. We need to hear from the, the different various groups and what their needs are, where their resources are, and where can we help? Not necessarily with our own monies, but is there state monies or federal monies that we get channeled their way? But we need to first hear, hear from them. But, you know, currently they do a great job as far as communicating out to the community. And Mr. Wessel, your response? Yes, uh, I did serve on the Senior Services Committee for four years, and uh, I have a lot of respect for that program. It's another program that uh, is not in the state mandate, but it was approved by the voters in a, with, a, with a senior millage. And uh, with 50% or just about 50% of our population being seniors, uh, they, are, they are fulfilling a real role, especially a role for the seniors who live alone the isolated seniors, the seniors that uh, uh, are, are getting up there and they don't have family close by. Um, they're connecting. We have a group in the county that's led by senior services that are connecting all of the agencies in the region with our senior services office, kind of like a one shop shopping, one stop shopping. And I, I think they have a role. I'm proud of the program that we have. I think the staff does a wonderful job and a real partnership with Lila Christian Neighbors and ShareCare to make it all work for those, especially seniors in need. There were several questions relating to the environment and here's another one. The Great Lakes contain 20% of the world's fresh surface water. 86% of Leelanau County is water. Do you believe that current policies provide adequate protections for county surface and groundwater resources? And what do you believe falls within a county commissioner's responsibilities and jurisdiction for water protection? We'll begin with Mr. Wessel. Thank you. Well, we covered uh, a piece of that in our uh, septic ordinance uh, and, and, and a big piece of that, but uh, we uh, haven't covered uh, some of the issues with uh, uh, old wells, and we haven't uh, uh, covered some of the issues with uh, drainage and runoff and uh, drainage districts. Uh, we've got issues with invasive species in the, uh, in, in the lakes, uh, and we've got uh, issues with uh, uh, waste, waste uh, being dumped into, into, into the the ground and then it going into the groundwater. So I'm, the, the county has a role in working with Eagle and working with the DNR and working with the state and working with the feds to make sure that uh, we know what we have and we do the testing we need to test. We get the grants that are available to us. We get the ordinances that we need, uh, but much of that is, uh, is delegated to the state and not the county. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Next question, nearly 45% of Leelanau families are labeled as Alice families, asset limited, income constrained, employed. Judge Cooney. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss Mr. McMillan? You need McMillan? to let Mike answer that question too. I'm so sorry, Mr. McMillan. Uh, so your response to the uh, question about uh, protection of water. I'll make it easy on you, I'll agree with Ty. I thought it was a great answer, uh, again, Back to my point of staying in your lane, I think the county commissioners understand there's subject matter experts, the DNR, Eagle, they're gonna take care of those. I think our farmers over the years have done a great job of self-managing and, and seeking out the help from resources like Michigan State and how they can be better stewards of the land and then obviously the water. But uh, the uh, Ty's answer is a very, very good answer, very, very on point on. All right, thank you. And sorry to uh, skip over you there. Oh, it's been uh, happened a lot in my life. <laughs> so uh, the next question is, nearly 45% of Leelanau families are labeled as Alice families, asset limited, income constrained, but employed, and or are living uh, in poverty. What has been your experience in working with low income families 
And what suggestions do you have for the county's role in addressing this population? We'll begin with Mr. McMillan. Uh, another great question. Uh, those are, I don't wanna say scary numbers, but they're concerning numbers because as we know, the current economy and, and what we're projecting for next year is probably only gonna put more stress on those numbers and maybe see those, those numbers increase. So my experience has uh, primarily been in my previous uh, uh, residence in, in Memphis, where I worked as a mentor in seventh and eighth grade, and you saw firsthand uh, the, the difficulties that children have there. Uh, my wife also is a volunteer in Memphis with the foster placement program in Memphis, Tennessee, and the stories were just uh, heartbreaking. Where each time she came home, she wanted to bring a kid. She wanted to bring one of the kids home with her. Um, working with the townships, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have to address. What do, how do we attract, how do we attract businesses? How do we attract ways for folks to stay here and thrive here because they want to stay here, but the current economic opportunities they have here are very limited. Um, and the county's role should be in working with the townships and how do we develop an attractive business environment? All right, and Mr. Wessel, your response? Yes, thank you. Well, for uh, a dozen years or so, I have uh, authored uh, a, a report called Invisible Lelina, where I try to uh, identify uh, the, the statistics of how we're doing relative to a lot of indicators in poverty and Alice and, and food insecurity and child abuse and education. And, uh, all of those things are in that Invisible Lelina. Uh, the county does have a role, not a sole role. I, uh, I think uh, our volunteers and our service groups have a big role. I'm a member of Lions Club because we serve that population. I'm a member of the Rotary Club because we serve that population. I managed with my wife the food pantry in, in Northport uh, for that population. But I think the county has an advocacy role, a collaboration role. Uh, the county has some opportunity to do some grants. The county has an opportunity to help with some mentoring. And most of all, the county has an opportunity to connect all of the many resources to make sure that needs are being met. I'm out of time. All right, thank you. Uh, next question. The brain drain of our college graduates is a real concern. What can be done? And we'll begin this time with Ms. Russell. The brain drain of our college students. Would you repeat the question, please? The brain drain of our college graduates is a real concern. What can be done? Well, uh, as, a, uh, as a father of two college professors, uh, I, uh, I, that's, that's a question that uh, I, I ought to ask them. Um, the, uh, I, I like where we are with with uh, the de-emphasis on on some of the uh, the liberal arts education and the turning to everybody does not need to have a college education, but we need to promote I think K through fourteen education for everybody. Make sure everybody leaves a college or or career training with a skill. But I frankly don't know what the, what the question is about uh, the county role on the brain drain. Uh, I, I can't answer it, I'm sorry. All right, and uh, Mr. McMillan, your response? I think, uh, you know, Ty answers it with, you know, I'm not sure what the county position should be on that as, as well, because again, it's not within our job description, if you will. But, uh, and, and I have a similar concern when I worked as a mentor in the Memphis City Schools, the program we were trained on, seventh and eighth grade, and the whole goal was to get these kids ready for college. And you know, you'd always raise your hand and say, "They should." Not everybody needs to go to college, and I think that's part of the problem that we currently have in this environment. We talk about the college kids, we forget about the other ones. And I think the county, or working with the townships and working with the different resources, possibly could look at, you know, do we start a trade school through our through our schools? Uh, do we do something that helps people stay here, but take advantage of, you talk to a builder, builders can't find help, skilled help, they can't find that. So I do think there's opportunities for us to do things and working with the townships and the state resources to keep people here. But I, my focus would be more on the, not college, but the ones that are gonna be sticking around. 
All right, next question. Can or should we shift more uh, to the private sector to foster smaller government and reduce government pension responsibilities? We'll begin with Mr. McMillan this time. Oh, the county is doing an admirable job of maintaining its pension obligations. So it don't, you know, we're not in Illinois or we're not a California situation as some of those states face critical issues right now. Um, on, that, on that question, I've always been an advocate that the private sector can perform better than the public sector. Public sector certainly has a role. And we talked a little bit earlier about mental health and senior services and those type of things. But there are so many things that the private sector can do so much better, so much more efficiently for the, for the consumer and, and for the constituents out there that potentially could also lower taxes. So I've always been an advocate, will continue to be an advocate that uh, we should always look at that opportunity to uh, utilize private services over uh, public services. Great, thank you. And Mr. Wessel? Oh, I'm, I, I'm, thank you, Mike, for pointing out that the county has uh, done a pretty good job of uh, paying down their MERS and we're in an enviable position on, uh, on our MERS liability. Um, I, I was in the school business and uh, uh, in the school business, uh, I learned that there are some things government and public can do better than, the, than, than private business and some things private business can do better than public. Um, I, uh, I don't think most of the services that county government provides can be provided better by private business. I think uh, the mandated, I don't want private police forces and I don't want private emergency services and private clerks and private register of deeds. I think if we stay in our lane and do those things that government can do best, uh, and we let uh, private business and the, and, the, and the business sector take care of those things that they do best, uh, we'll have the best of both worlds. All right, uh, Tricia, do we have time for another question? Uh, I think we have time for one more question. If you've got another that you picked. Okay. So uh, what is your position on expanding broadband internet service throughout the county? Do you feel more or less should be done or are current plans adequate? We'll begin this time with Mr. Wessel. And I know this is one that uh, Mike and I aren't going to agree on, so I'm glad I get to go first. Um, we, uh, we do have a plan that was approved uh, by 7-0 vote at the county commission after years and years of study to bring uh, fiber to our county. Uh, we have uh, most of the county in the plan. Uh, we have some, uh, some townships on the southwest end of the county that we're still working on. We're able to use ARPA money. We have a signed contract with Point Broadband, and I am really excited about the opportunity for our residents to get uh, uh, fast, uh, high-speed uh, fiber. And I also like it that it's at the cost that they're going to be able to afford. Some of the options we looked at were too expensive for the average homeowner to install. And the plan that we've adopted uh, and we're contracting for is going to be very reasonably connected to the home throughout the county. And I'm, uh, I'm proud of where we are. And Mr. McMillan. Yeah, uh, I think we would differ on the terms of reasonable on the, on the cost of it, but yeah, I'm, I'm a big advocate and I joined Lyft primarily for the reason of being an advocate for fiber because as I mentioned earlier, uh, the effort that I led is the only fiber that currently exists in Leelanau County. So I speak from a, uh, an experience with it. Uh, it's how you go about it is what I'm concerned about. And as I expressed earlier, uh, we were awarded a $5 million contract with no bids. And that's just, it's just not acceptable in simple governance or anything. And so I would continue down that path that fiber is our option. I mean, you cannot have a growing community. You can't service your, you know, telehealth. You can't service the kids. You can't service, you can't bring, you know, trades to this, you can't bring new businesses here unless we have, you know, the best internet and that's, that is fiber. So. I will continue to support that. I will still be a big advocate for it, but more importantly, doing it the right way, the most cost-efficient way 
for uh, the citizens involved. All right, at this point, I wanna thank all of the voters who submitted what I thought were some great questions for tonight's program. And now we're going to hear closing remarks from each of our candidates. Mr. McMillan began with the opening statement. So we'll begin this time with Mr. Wessel. Mr. Wessel, uh, you have two minutes. Thank you very much. And, and uh, thank you, Judge and Ms. Denton in the league and Mike for, for the opportunity tonight. Uh, most importantly, thanks to all the residents, uh, assuming there are residents watching that are, that are watching tonight or will watch later. I uh, would appreciate the support of the voters. My opponent is campaigning on the need for a new perspective campaign. Obviously, I disagree. I will continue to offer the perspective that I've advocated for since my election in 2014. I will work hard to ensure that all state mandated functions of the county are delivered. I will also work hard to continue to provide thoughtful decision making, strong leadership, representation to all residents, uh, responsible budgeting, fiscal management, low taxes, advocacy for collaboration and partnerships, support for children, family and residents, concern for environmental protection, advocacy and a loud voice for attainable housing and partnerships that address the housing shortage. And when, when I, will, I will do it with hard work, with constant communication, with civility and respect for all. Thank you for your support and your high expectations. Leelanau County residents expect and deserve the responsible and respectful leadership. I will continue to strive to meet that standard. Thank you and thank you, Mike. All right, thank you, Mr. Wessel and Mr. McMillan. Your closing art, uh, statement. Uh, and again, I appreciate the forum. Uh, Judge Bob has done a great job moderating. Uh, and, and Ty, I appreciate your comments and, uh, and, and the service you provided. Uh, we only differ because we do need a, a new perspective. We need new thinking. Uh, we need to be more strategic in how we view the opportunities and the challenges that this county will face. Uh, we mentioned earlier the aging population. We talked about uh, the mental health challenges that our kids are facing. We talked, Dr. Uh, Judge Bobby mentioned the, uh, the, you know, the brain drain from colleges and you know the lack of people, kids that want to stay here after high school. Uh, those are all big challenges here, and uh, I believe what you would get with me by voting for me is actually action and results, okay? I'm not running to be, I'm not running to be, to serve on more committees, okay? I can just volunteer and be on committees and continue and play pickleball and golf to my delight. But no, I, I wanna see change happen. I mean, this is an area, this is a community that uh, the old saying that, you know, someday you'll find me horizontal here. And this is my last stop. And uh, I wanna make it better for everybody, uh, just not myself. And I think I have the ideas. I certainly have the ener energy and I certainly have the commitment uh, from my previous experiences to get results, to get results that are sustainable. So again, I ask for your vote and understand uh, the perspective I bring. It's not that I'm better than Ty, it's just different than Ty. And again, I'd ask for your vote. Thank you. All right, at this time, I wanna thank uh, both of the candidates, Ty Wessel and Mike McMillan, for participating. As a politician myself, I know it's not easy to put yourself out there, but I respect anyone who is willing to do so to help improve their community. And again, I want to thank Travers Area Community Media, the Leelanau Enterprise, the League of Women Voters of Leelanau County for making this forum possible. We thank you uh, voters for taking the time to listen and learn about your candidates for the fourth district. And uh, I believe the league president, uh, Ms. Denton, has a few uh, closing words. Thank you, uh, Judge, and thank you, candidates. It's not a forum without the candidates. Um, I, I keep uh, sitting back uh, after the privilege of being able to uh, host these events, and I'm so impressed by the um, quality and determination of the people in our community. 
and grateful for your willingness to run for office. Um, equally uh, as remarkable is the level of questions that we've received, um, as the judge mentioned. Um, and we, I will be sharing all the questions that we've received with the candidates once we've completed our forum, uh, so forums, so that you can uh, know what issues are on the minds of the folks that will be voting for you, and that you, uh, one of you will be representing. Um, a word for our voters, yourselves included, uh, check out vote411.org online for more information on all the candidates running for office um, that will be on your ballot. In addition to that, you can find more information about proposals that will appear on your ballot and other need to know information about the voting process. Have a plan for voting, whether you use an absentee voter ballot or cast your vote in person. And remember, democracy is not a spectator sport. Remember to vote in the November 8th general election. A recording of this program will be available at lwvlilana.org under our uh, program links and also rebroadcast by Traverse Area Community Media on their Spectrum can, uh, cable channel 189 and available for playback on their uh, Traverse Area Community website and Facebook, probably. Um, that's all I have. Um, thank you again, all of you, for participating, taking time for me evening. And uh, remember to vote. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.